I'm the local member of parliament here and people told me about Andreas and what uh, his family are doing to remember him. This is a fucking brilliant event and uh, I really admire Maria for organising it. It's a great way to remember a life taken too soon. I am Maria Flores and I am the mother of uh, Andreas Flores. That shoot was done just about two weeks before he was diagnosed. That was to coincide with the release of his EP, which he had just finished recording and he felt pretty elated and pretty proud. Andres was a good friend of mine. Um, I produced his, uh, his EP and I recorded it all in my house. And we were always talking about recording something for him and it, it finally took place and, and I was super proud of that. He definitely had the songs written and everything like that, but he needed someone to uh, kind of come in and fill in the blanks. Um, I play all the other instruments on the, on the album and he kind of wanted my advice in, ter in terms of how to produce it and how to make it a full-fledged full release. He really needs to be pushed as a, as a singer as well because he had an incredible voice but he'd never made a recording before. He actually sounded better singing my song. He went to have a blood test because some um, bruises had started appearing all over his body. And then uh, it came the devastating news that um, it was leukemia. Not only was leukemia, it was the most aggressive strain you could possibly get. They diagnosed and then he passed away in the same, in the same six months. But um, I do think he packed it, packed it in, like he did, a lot of, he did a lot in his 24 years. His EP that he had, that he had um, finished recording uh, sounds um, quite mature like for, a, um, for someone of his age. I don't think either of us really had any point in the making of the album where we were at a tough decision or anything like that. We kind of really knew each other on a, on a similar wavelength. We were all into the same music and all into the same ideas and, and I guess creative vibe for what we were going for that we didn't really have a lot of disagreements. He started travelling when he was quite young so I think that's kind of um, not a reason but um, you know, he was exposed to many different things from early on um, when he went travelling with my parents around the world. This represents keeping his um, memory alive through something that he was very passionate about, which was music, uh, travel, and through that, the connectedness with the community. Because for me, what this represents is building communities and uh, giving back to the community. Andy's my cousin, and uh, when it, uh, when, when he passed away tragically. I felt ho hopeless and helpless and uh, it just came to me that I thought a nice way or a, a good way of turning our grief into something more constructive was to set up a scholarship in his name because I think um, that was a really good way of remembering him and, and keeping the legacy going forward. Our family is really supportive of education and so helping other talented musicians like Andy to fulfil their studies overseas was really um, a fitting way to pay tribute to him. So uh, tonight's one way to kickstart our, uh, our annual event and hopefully build on the, uh, the goal that we're trying to get, which is ultimately $250,000 to set it up in perpetuity. It'll be going on forever. What impressed me about Andreas was that it was never about him. When people said, man, you must feel really angry, you must feel really pissed off, you must really think, why me? And he said, no, no man, it's not why me, why not me? It's why does it happen in the first place? And so to me, that signified that um, the, the stature of the man. He took it on his chin right up until the end. He was given the news that we had reached the, the end of the road. There was nothing else we could do for him. He stood up with the little strength that he had he shook the hand of the doctor and I think it even gave him a hug and said I really feel sorry for you guys because I know how much you tried. So who would say that? And that to me I carry that in my heart. That gives me inspiration and that gives me a reason to get up every morning and try to be one minute part of uh, 
of how strong Andreas was. When we were working out his song, you were constantly hearing his voice um, and looking at photos and um, yeah, look, you know, it's always there. Um, you're, always, you're always reminded that, um, that, you know, he's not here. Or the reason why we're doing all this is, is that he's not here. It happened very, very, very quickly um, and I don't think anyone expected it. It's hard that it happened at such a transitional point in his life because... Well, I think this body of work says so much about where he was and that's why I think it's so important. It's not just a, a group of songs. He was really writing about where he was. It doesn't feel right um, to pursue the band without him um, and that's no discredit to any of us. It's just... Um, I don't know, I think we, we were going somewhere with Andreas and um, that, you know, we kind of had our hearts set on that destination and, you know, without him there, it's not going to be the same. I think the hardest part is that he never got to sing the songs and so, uh, you know, there's a major responsibility on all of us as a group to perform the songs and, and do do it justice. You know, he was such a warm and goofy guy and he just had that nature where you know people would be drawn to him all the time and he was so not phased about you know the material things in life or the things that we all fuss about. I was genuinely happy to see you like um, like even the time that you know when I was living at home um, you know you'd say goodnight and then in the morning you know he'd wake up and, and he'd be like hey you know give you this big hug and kiss hey how you going you know you went to bed and then in the morning he'd be like you know like he hadn't seen you for a couple of years you know back when we were much younger and everyone was buying you know colored phones back then and that was thin because it was just happening and you know one thing led to another but andreas decided on his walk home he was going to buy a cactus instead and that really says everything about him he he lived how he felt and um, he was special for that reason because he really just didn't concern himself with the things that weren't important. So yeah, I think I just want everyone to have a, a solid listen to his work and get a, at least a little glimpse of who he was. It's an honor to get to know a bit of Andrea's work and uh, the community that he created and the amazing I would say the amazing legacy that he left us. Andrea's life uh, uh, inspired uh, so many people and it's a tree that kept growing, you know, even if he's not here present in the physical form, I think that uh, the energy and the message that he left uh, was so strong that it brought us all together here tonight. What I appreciate about this event is that I'm a parent of a 16-year-old boy. My uh, son Rupert is uh, very artistic and creative. I cannot imagine when I read Andreas' story the sense of grief and loss. It's unimaginable. So the fact that his family want to introduce him to people who would never otherwise meet him, I think is fantastic. So that is um, something that uh is sustaining us and it's transforming part of this unbelievable, unbelievably searing grief into joy. Hearing is the last sense to go. We kept telling him that we knew that it was going to be played on Triple J. By some way, some kind of miracle, he managed to communicate that he was still with us, that he heard it. <laughs>